Hi, I'm Wes Solom. I'm a genetic counselor from HD Genetics, a company that's dedicated to providing remote genetic counseling and genetic testing options for the HD community. And today I'm here on behalf of HDYO, HDYO, the Huntington's Disease Youth Organization, for a series called HDU to share stories from the HD community. And these stories are told by and for the HD community. Deciding to test for HD is one of the biggest decisions that someone can face. And today we're gonna to hear from a couple of folks who have decided not to test. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, to make this simpler, uh, call on you guys individually to, to kind of give us a little bit of um, some quick introductions and let us know where you live, a little bit about you, and your connection to HD. And so I'll start in, in order of how I see things, which is uh, with Helen. Okay, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Helen. I am uh, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, I am currently 31 years old. And uh, I am uh, graduated as an engineering and I have a master's degree, degree also in uh, business strategy. And I work today as a product manager in a tech company. So this is what I do for a living. Uh, what I like to do at my free time is uh, basically sports. I really like outdoor sports. So I play volleyball. I also like to run. And uh, basically that's it. And I also like to travel and hang out with my friends generally. That's fantastic. And Helen, what's your connection to HD? Okay. So my connection to HD uh, is actually my mom. She has HD uh, ever since uh, I can remember. Uh, uh, she was diagnosed as I was a child. Uh, and uh, she was very young and she has uh, she had uh, little symptoms. Uh, she didn't have like uh, much symptoms when she was diagnosed. And so I followed the, the whole uh, progress of uh, her disease, like until today. today. She is currently with uh, 63, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, 63 years old. And uh, she basically nowadays, she needs 24 hours assistance of nurses and she needs uh, 24 hours help to uh, do all, all of the things uh, in a daily basis. So uh, this is my connection. All right. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Serena, if you could tell us where you live, a little bit about you and your connection to Huntington's disease. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my name is Serena. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm in the United States. Um, and I just graduated in May, actually. Um, so I was a bio major and then health studies minor um, at Haverford College. Um, and right now I'm working as a research technician uh, at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Um, and so we look at um, a lot of different rare diseases in kids, um, which I think is really cool um, to be able to see the science side of um, things. Um, and I'm hoping to pursue graduate school um, in biology research. Um, yeah, and in my free time, I love being outdoors and in nature um, and running um, and spending time with families, friends, and my dog. Um, and yeah, my connection to HD is my mom. Um, she's in the advanced stages of HD, similar to Helen. Um, and she, she also had HD when I was very young, about like five or six. Um, uh, is when she started having like more movement symptoms. Um, and then my aunt um, and grandmother passed away with HD. Um, and then my sister also tested positive for HD. But yeah, currently I'm at risk. Um, and at the moment, um, I haven't decided um, about testing. All right, thanks for sharing that. And then finally, Eric, if you could share with us where you live, a little bit about you and your connection to Huntington's disease. Yeah, of course. So um, my name's Eric, I'm 21 and I live in Calgary, which is in Canada. And um, I'm currently in engineering. So I just going into my last year of that um, and my connect, or I guess my activities that I like to do, I like to run a lot. Um, and if there's any, any chance that I can go play with some animals, um, I'm always down to go to a dog park 
And my connection to HD is through my dad. So he tested positive when I was maybe 14 or 15. Um, but we knew about it before then because my grandma is also positive. Um, so yeah, and since then I haven't really uh, gone down the road of genetic testing, but I guess we can get into that a bit later. Yeah, okay. So I, I, I thought, you know, maybe we would start out with kind of a very broad question, which is just how has Huntington's disease affected you? How has Huntington's disease essentially affected your life? And I'll I'll say, let's go in reverse order. I'll, I'll go to you, Eric, since you were patient before. Yeah, so for me, it's always been through mostly um, my grandma. So my dad is still pretty early symptoms. Um, so we've always known about it since I was a kid, um, but just never, like, it was just something there like we never really had any conversations about it but we would go to like the fundraising events and um we definitely like heard about it before but I don't think anybody really told us and sat us down until I was about 14 when my dad tested positive and then since then um because my dad is still in the earlier symptoms um my family tries mostly to just be involved with the community and you know fundraise and support other people uh because uh, we we have less of a we have less of a um, an amount to deal with at home. Gotcha. And Serena, how would you say that Huntington's disease has affected your life? Um, yeah, I think growing up, it was definitely pretty challenging. Just being like young, um, and I'm probably Helen can relate to this too. Is like some of the symptoms are like hard it was hard for me to understand like growing up in that like environment and to like understand like this is like Huntington's disease um and not necessarily like my mom um um but it, it has like affected me in many positive ways too and I think now actually like I've been able to get a lot closer with my mom and like my sister through this disease and being able to have community um and meet all these amazing people at these events and things like I'm really grateful for that um and inspiring like um my passion for science and then also um just being able to get involved in a lot of different things i think is really um powerful um so i really appreciate um all that's given me in addition to like the challenges i've had growing up with this disease i think there's a lot of good that has also come out of it yeah i also think uh just to to add on uh what the guys uh mentioned i think uh it it was pretty hard to grow up. Uh, I think we are uh, we were very uh, young and probably uh, not mature enough to deal with this. Like it's a very uh, uh, difficult and complicated uh, disease with a lot of symptoms, a lot of impact. So uh, I think uh, uh, one of the challenges was to uh apart from uh dealing with uh the symptoms that my, my my mom was experiencing and also helping her and making sure she she was uh okay and like worrying with uh with her also being uh worried about uh the chance of inheriting it so uh as soon as i uh realized i remember i i i think i got to know that i could inherit maybe searching on internet or something because it was not not also uh, something that my family used to like uh, say openly and talk about it openly. So I remember uh, searching it and like finding out and then uh, begin to uh, experience a lot of uh, bad feelings of, of anxiety and, and fear. Uh, and apart from that, dealing with uh, the symptoms of my mom. So I think this is was the the most impact during my uh, teenagehood, and uh, but I I think also I I think this uh, has helped me uh, being more mature. Uh, from now I think uh, back then uh, I was struggling, but now I I think myself as a, as a uh, very stronger and more mature person because of that. So I think uh, uh, it was somehow good. Okay, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, this this next question is basically, I want to open it up as a conversation. So 
When did you first start considering genetic testing for Huntington's disease? So when did you first start thinking about HD for yourself and your own personal risk and kind of considering the process of genetic testing and what that might mean for you? I'll start. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I think I started considering uh, ever since I get to know that I could inherit it. So uh, I remember when I was very, very young, like uh, I think 15 or 16, maybe I had decided like to test, like I, I had in my mind that I would test when I was 21, which is the minimum age for testing here, at least here in Brazil. And I decided that I would test uh but then i got to 21 years and then i changed my mind and then i i i didn't consider testing anymore but uh this is when i started thinking yeah i think i have a very similar story um like i found out when i was 14 but the minimum testing age is 18 in canada so i didn't think too much about it um but right around when i was just about to turn 18, um, I started meeting with a genetic counselor and going through the steps because in Canada, you need to go, um, I, th I think from what I recall, I, this might be wrong, but you need to have the genetic counselor uh, give you like the two thumbs up and then you can go get tested. Um, I think you can go anyways, but it's definitely recommended that you have several sessions with the counselor. So I was doing that and then COVID hit and they weren't doing any testing so that kind of postponed my plans and allowed me to just have that extra time to think. And then once uh, I could go get tested again, the counselor reached out to me and let me know. And I didn't have that desire to, to do that. Um, I just realized that it was so much more complex than uh, I, I've realized and just all of the different, um, I don't know, I just had a bit of a different experience being a bit older than I did when I was younger. I was just, I just wanted the answer right away, but I didn't really consider what that would mean for um, both the immediate term and long-term. Yeah, I think um, also for me too, I guess it's a little different because growing up, like I kind of always knew Huntington's was in my family, but I think when I was little, it, I just kind of like put it out of my mind. I was like, oh, this is something I'm never gonna get. Or it was sort of just like natural in my family where I didn't think about it too much. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I was 11, like I found like a journal that I wrote and I like wrote, I was like, I'm at risk for this disease too. And so I knew like being at that age, I somehow already knew that I was at risk for the disease in some way, but it ne didn't necessarily like scare me as much until I started getting into like high school and like my mom started getting sicker um, as when I think like it started to hit me a little bit more. Um, so I didn't really consider genetic testing until my sister got tested maybe like I think that was like four three or four years ago um so I was like oh like this is something she's doing like maybe this is something I should consider now too because it was like I don't really have any other cousins who are at risk or any other family members besides my sister and me um so it was only like us two left so I was like oh if she's like taking <laughs> taking one for the team and like starting off maybe this is something I should do um, but like you were saying, Eric, that sort of like sparked my mind to like, oh, like after hearing her go through the process, it made it a lot more complex in my mind too. And I'm like, oh, there's all these things that I'm considering now that she's telling me about that's kind of like she, she wished she knew. Um, so I really appreciate her like sharing that with me. Um, so yeah, I think her like whole testing journey kind of like shaped me too and made me think a lot harder about the whole process. Yeah, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, Eric, you brought up a good point that is something that I want to explore a little further with each of you guys if you're if you're comfortable with it. But Eric, you you had talked about you know essentially starting the process, starting the the genetic counseling and genetic testing process for HD and kind of getting along there, but having that that barrier of COVID nineteen to, to kind of build a stop for a moment, a, a kind of a pause. And then from that pause, instead of uh, continuing down that road, you decided not, not now, maybe I'll take a moment. I'm curious if you could share with us a little bit more about what was going through your mind and sort of what kind of led to your decision to hold off for now on testing for HD. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it was just a symptom of um, that 
transition you go from like when you're just getting a bit more independent from your family like I just graduated high school I was like going to university I have a bit more of um, different perspective on the world so now when I'm considering testing it's like okay like I'm gonna have a family someday like I have like a brother who um, is also untested and like I have family and before that it was always like a very individual thing it was always just like I need to know so then I can decide how um how to plan my life and I think I think a lot of that was also guided by like the reason why I've still decided not to is by my conversations with the counselor because I remember being really really frustrated with her because she asked some really good questions um and just letting those kind of sink in like um yeah I, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to dive into a bit more, but I think it was mostly just, I, I got a, more things to think about than just me. Sure, yeah. Do you remember any of those questions that the counselor did ask that were particularly frustrating and difficult to? Yeah, because they're all the, so when I introduce HD to somebody, um, I usually try to ask them a few of these questions. So my, I think my favorite one, um, it's like, okay, well, how will this actually change your life? Because if I test and I'm negative, um, then it's like, okay, yeah, like, are you going to just stop being involved in the HD community? No, of course not. Um, are you going to go, like, have a huge family that you otherwise wouldn't have had or something? Like, probably not. And then on the other end, if I tested positive, like, okay, what does that actually make a difference? Like, am I going to go out every single day, like take a ton of vacations and just try to live my life the best I can? Like, okay, well, why wouldn't I do that right now? And it was just like those kind of double checking yourself questions. Um, and if, if you think of them for, or at least for me, I, I th like I had an extra two years to think about them. Um, it, it really just realized like, or it let me realize that there was no huge rush. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's appropriate. Gotcha. Yeah. And Helen and Serena, I'm wondering, you know, how uh, how it's been for you, if there if there's ever been a process or if you've ever sort of started the process and then just kind of decided not to, or how close you have actually gotten to undergoing genetic testing for HD. Yeah, I think my experience uh, is a little bit uh, similar to uh, to Eric's. And, uh, but I didn't get to a genetic counselor. Actually, I got a pretty uh, similar advice, but it was from my uh, mother's neurologist uh, because she has a lot of experience with HD. She is like referenced here uh, in Brazil for the disease. So she has a lot of uh, understanding of the disease. And uh, she actually uh, questioned me the same thing, like, I was thinking about uh, going through through the generic testing uh, so that I can enjoy my life better, so that I could like do the things uh, faster and like uh, because somehow I thought that if it was positive, I was going to have a less time of life or something like that. And uh, she questioned me like, uh, how come you don't do it? The things you want to do like today, you don't have to have a positive uh, uh, testing for you to like start doing the things you want to do. So if you want to travel, like go travel. If you want to start doing something that you never did, uh, like just do it regardless of the disease because something can happen uh, even though uh, not being the disease, like a lot of things can happen. So we have to enjoy life uh, at the fullest, like regardless of uh, the, the the testing positive or, or negative. So this is what I thought that I would only uh, test it, test uh, if I had a real life changing decision, like a, a really binary uh, decision, specific decision that I would do differently if I get positive or negative. And uh, until now, I didn't have it. Uh, so I decided not to test because I really don't, don't see uh, how it would change my life uh, receiving that information. So uh, I think that's it. Yeah, and then I guess for me, um, I never like formally went to 
I think I've spoken with a genetic counselor like very briefly once, but it was more just, I wasn't really even seriously considering um, genetic testing. Um, I think it's definitely something, especially now, like after my sister has been tested um, and she tested positive um, um, and she said it was okay for me to share that. Um, but it was just hard to know like, oh, my sister is positive. Sort of like what you guys were saying too. I started thinking like, well, if I get tested, like, what does that like change about my life and things? And like, I don't want it to necessarily change how I'm living. Um, and also like knowing my sister's positive, like if I test negative or positive, um, it's sort of like, I'm always going to have like HD as part of my life. So it's not like it's going to like magically disappear or anything like that. I um, mean, I don't want it to like, like you were saying, Eric, like I'm still really value this community and like want to be a part of things. Um, so sort of just like thinking through those questions, like I don't really see the value in like having one result or the other besides like the fact sometimes I wonder like, oh, would I be a lot less anxious? Like if I just knew or is it making me more anxious not knowing? So which is going to cause me less anxiety? Um, but I think in, in the short term, at least like um, deciding not to test is the best decision for me. Gotcha. Yeah. Can I jump in? really quick. absolutely i really liked what you said about um like it would i be less anxious and that like that train of thought because um i definitely i go through the waves of uh when life's really good and i i think about testing and i almost um like think yeah of course like if i if i found out whatever way it would be i would be like able to handle the result and then um you know life doesn't get so good and uh I realize that I have to consider how this would affect me when I'm both at my best and my worst and realizing that um, at least for me, like before I get tested, I would really like to have these um, like tools in my toolkit. So I, I could handle um, like the really bad days and other things like that to like develop the, the relationships that I can rely on and um, like the, the community I can fall back to. So that the, the, when it, how do I word it better? Trying to plan for the different phases you go through in life. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, so this is, this is great to hear guys. Thank you for sharing all this. Um, essentially, you know, sometimes the question comes up of, you know, why undergo counseling with genetic testing for Huntington's disease and, what's sort of the purpose of, of going through these exercises of thinking about various outcomes and different, you know, having these different questions posed to you. And, and, you know, I know that um, everyone has their own uh, personal reaction to these things, but it sounds like Eric, as you described kind of early on, it was a little frustrating, but then over time you found it as kind of helpful to sort of say, oh, okay, actually, hang on, let me, take a second and think about this uh, in a few different few different ways, a few different lenses, and similarly with Helen as well. And, uh, you know, trying to maybe like um, consider different things in life and how this might affect uh, you and your people close to you and decisions that you make in life. And, and um, really, ultimately, the goal is to find what decision is best for you, right? And so I think it's really it's really fantastic that you guys are sharing these stories. I really appreciate it. Um, these these sort of pauses in time can kind of be very helpful for reflecting and and imagining potential futures and and deciding whether or not now is the right time. So, have you ever kind of uh, kind of shifting gears a little bit? Have you guys have you ever thought of what kind of circumstances might kind of um, uh, be influential for your decision to decide that you do want to go forward with testing? Like what would it, uh, what in your life needs, needs to be present or what needs to change in order for you to decide that now is the time if you do know that. And if there is a time that you feel like there would be, uh, appropriate for testing. Yeah, I can say that uh, I am uh, at an age that I am already considering having kids and having a family. So uh, this is the time where I am considering uh, going through genetic uh, testing. 
even though I know that there is a way uh, for you to do the, I think it's I. Uh, how do you say the fertilization? Oh, IVF. IVF. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I know that there is a way of you to doing that without knowing, but I really think that uh, if you consider uh, your life with a child, uh, a lot of responsibilities, I think uh, it will be a, a time where I would consider going through genetic testing because it could uh, change my decision on uh, having or not having kids, for example. Yeah, I'm sort of in a similar um, uh, idea. I have a similar feeling as Helen. Um, sorry. Um, probably not until like I start a family or like once my career is more settled down, I'm not in like a lot of change. I know it's like a lot of moving parts now, just with like my family situation, like figuring out future career stuff. Um, so once I feel more like settled with everything else, um, maybe is that when a time that I start considering it more seriously, um, particularly like um, there's a lot of like new treatments and like therapies also being developed. So once there's like a solid um, therapy out that I know like, oh, this would have like a, a significant chance of like, oh, delaying my symptoms or like there's other things now that I know that um, could be used to treat HD, then it's a time when I would more seriously consider testing. Yeah, and I guess I, Serena, you said a lot of really good points, so I won't try to repeat all of them. Um, me personally, I've always tried to, I don't know, um, like the, the urgency of it isn't really there for me right now, but somebody brought up a good point to me earlier that, um, if I test and I say I am positive, then think of all the good things that I could do with that. Um, and they just sit, like mostly the research, like I could be participating in research trials, um. And so for me, the factors of why I haven't gotten tested yet have been mostly like I'm still in university, a lot of like fluctuation with, um, you know, personal life, like career and where am I going to go, um, other factors like that and a relationship. Um, but I, I think the, when you brought up research, it just sparked that in my head. And um, I, yeah, I think the knowing that there would be like a, a significant benefit that I could bring to the community for having been tested, I think that would really influence me. Um, and then, yeah, of course, all the other factors that you and Helen mentioned. Yeah, fantastic. So bringing up research kind of, a, kind of along the same lines, I'm curious if there was a treatment that became available that was shown to, you know, have effects on Huntington's disease. Do you feel that that would influence your decision of seeking testing for HD? Yeah, I think definitely. Yeah, I think um, it, it would just help knowing, like easing the anxiety, like Serena was saying earlier, um, rather than just sitting with this, like the 50-50, it could be, um, I don't know, there's, there's different outcomes on the horizon once you bring that in. So I think that would definitely influence me to want to be tested earlier. Gotcha. Yeah. And Serena, how do you feel about that? Uh, if there's a treatment available, would that influence your decision to seek genetic testing? Yeah, like Helen um, and Eric were saying, I think that definitely would have um, a significant impact. Um, I know at least for my sister, that was like a driving motivator for her too, to like get involved in trials and things too. Um, and she was kind of a little disappointed because like a lot of things now aren't for pre-symptomatic people. Um, so it'd be nice if there's more like pre-symptomatic trials or like things that I could get involved with knowing like I have like a positive result um, that I could do, or if I have the hope that, oh, I, can, I know there's this treatment out that has a high likelihood of like delaying my symptoms or like um, is really beneficial for improving symptoms, then that would definitely sway me more towards getting tested, knowing that there's um, different things I could do to um, potentially like alleviate those symptoms. Yeah, okay. I'm curious, what would you share to the community that's out there that's currently considering getting tested? Um, maybe even thinking about, you know, imagining someone coming up to you and meeting you and learning that you're at risk for HD and they 
they say, hey, I am too. And actually, I'm, I'm thinking about getting tested. What would you want to talk with them about? I think I would ask the, the, the same question that uh, I was asked and made me think, made me reflect on. Uh, I would really uh, ask, ask the person to reflect if uh, what she would do with the results would really change uh, the, the perspective and the, the, the way of her life if she, if she turned positive or negative. Uh, then I, I think uh, should should go ahead and do it but if you are thinking that uh, uh you should enjoy life better uh, or this kind of stuff you, uh, probably i would advise uh, the person to reflect if uh isn't that uh possible for you to do even though uh you don't have the answer because uh if it's possible for you to do anything uh regardless of the answer positive or ne negative i think uh, we should do it because uh, we never know, like the disease could be one of the things uh, possible for uh, for to, ha to happen in our lives. So uh, we should be uh, living life at a, our fullest, regardless of the results. So I would advise on that, like if you really have a reason and a choice to make with the result, like I should go ahead and do it. But otherwise, you should like uh, think again. Yeah, I think um, Helen had really great points too. In addition to what Helen was saying, um, something I think is like important to consider that maybe gets like overlooked sometimes is like, what if you test negative? And like, that may seem like a really positive thing, like, oh, like, let's celebrate this. Like you won't have HD, but sort of like going back to Eric's point too, like thinking about like your relationships and like how this impacts other family members. Um, just knowing that like sometimes testing negative can also come with a lot of like um like negative emotions if, I, if I'm saying that correctly um mm -hmm. and like survivor's guilt and that's something I worry too like knowing that my sister is positive now like if I am negative like I'm still always gonna have to deal with that guilt like oh my sister is gonna have this now even though I don't um so I think like also considering the reverse side of like, oh, like how would this like affect your life now too? And it may not always be positive if you, if you, if you have like a negative result. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind too when you're going through the genetic testing process. Correct, I agree. Absolutely. Well, I would, I would just at this point kind of ask, does anyone have any last thoughts before we wrap up anything that we haven't addressed that maybe has been on your mind or something that you you'd like to say or, or express in this moment to the, the HD community um I kind of remembered parts of what I was going to say earlier but it's sure. like how would you react to it um I think like thinking of me earlier um I was very like hard-headed and like that I wanted to get tested I just wanted to know um now that I think about that and you know where I was at a few years ago um I, I don't think I was actually prepared for the result whether it would be positive or negative and what it would actually mean so it's just getting educated properly um the, I think the discussions with the counselor helped me the most for that and just helped me realize what questions I should be asking and what other things I haven't even thought of yet um because it's it is a very complex thing and there's going to be a lot of things that you don't think of um at the first time but in the last few years being more involved with the community getting to talk to people who have tested uh both positive and negative people who are like me and they're waiting to get tested and hearing the different things they have to say I think it's just trying to collect as much information as you can um trying to actually see the picture for what it is before just jumping into something because you have this like really intense emotional feeling that you should do it um, would be try to let let the emotions settle down a bit at least that helped me um you know not jump into something i wasn't prepared for i i was really oh go ahead <laughs> I was going to say that uh, I think this is the uh, our decision, or at least my decision for now. Uh, 
and also uh, for uh, us impacted with HD, I think there's no right or wrong. I think there is what's right for you. So I think uh, each person should uh, take uh, into consideration what we shared and also other people's uh, opinion, but you should really have uh, your own uh, reflection in your own process to decide uh, whether you want to test or not. So I think this is important also and to uh, also be aware of people. Uh, maybe uh, I, I've heard of people that don't have uh, any idea what is Huntington's disease. And when they when they heard about it, they say, oh, I should test, I would test, like, uh, because they don't have the reality. They don't uh, know exactly what it is, uh, the disease and how it impacts. So uh, just be aware of uh, other people's opinion that don't, don't really, uh, uh, know exactly what is the disease, where are the impacts. So I think that's it. Yeah, I think Helen and Eric, you have both really amazing points to make. Um, and to go off of like Helen's too, um, I think is really important. Like it is your decision. Um, so it's important to consider like how this will impact your relationships with family members and like other factors and things going on, but also like listen to yourself and like what you need um, and decide whether testing is the right decision for you or whether not testing um, and try to really think like what's best for you um, in the end. Um, and also like speak with genetic counselors, speak with like your therapist um, and people who know you well um, and receive their input um, and just take your time with the process. And like Eric was saying too, like I think it's important to like, if you feel like it's being rushed or like you feel like you're rushing into something then maybe it's a good time to like take a step back and like think about it for a little while until you're like really confident um, because like once it's, once you get tested, it's something you can't unknow. So it's good to really be solid in your decision before you make it. So this concludes the HDU, uh, experience for today. I want to say if you have any needs for any information resources, if you're looking to get connected, go to hdyo.org and you'll find a whole heap of help and, um, uh, information and resources there. So big thanks again for you guys uh, helping uh, today share your story and talking with us.